Over 2,000 years ago, nestled in the shadow of the fearsome Mount Vesuvius, lay the bustling city of Pompeii. As a favored holiday destination for Rome's rich and influential figures, Pompeii was a city bathed in prosperity and culture before its tragic end in 79 AD. It was a city alive with a unique rhythm, its streets humming with the energy of its approximately 15,000 inhabitants. These were people drawn to the city's vibrancy and abundant opportunities. The affluence and standing of Pompeii were undeniable, symbolized not least by the majestic amphitheater standing tall in the heart of the city. This amphitheater, built around 70 BC, was a testament to Roman engineering prowess. It was the oldest surviving Roman amphitheater and could house an impressive 20,000 spectators, a sizable chunk of the city's population. Life in Pompeii was as fast-paced as it was dynamic. This was reflected in the city's street-side fast-food spots called Thermopolia. With approximately 25 of these establishments scattered throughout the city, they were the go-to spots for quick, ready-to-eat meals. Most houses in Pompeii did not have kitchens, so these Thermopolia became crucial to daily life, providing an essential service for busy Pompeians. In a recent intriguing discovery at Pompeii, Archaeologists unearthed a fresco that bears a remarkable resemblance to a pizza. This artwork was discovered near what is believed to have been a hallway leading to a home bakery. The painting depicts a round focaccia bread adorned with various fruits, including a pomegranate and what is likely a date, served on a silver tray. Some even think that one of the fruits looks suspiciously like a pineapple. The depicted meal reflects both frugality and luxury, Reminiscent of the humble origins of pizza, a poor dish of southern Italy that has now achieved global acclaim. But Pompeii was not just a city of hasty meals and grand architecture. It was a city of precision and forethought, evident in its intricate street grid and the sophistication of its urban plan. Even the most minor details were meticulously considered. Streets were equipped with stepping stones to keep pedestrians' feet clean and dry during rain and sewage disposal a nod to the city's attentiveness to the well-being of its citizens. Not only were the city's streets advanced, but so was its water system. Aqueducts crisscrossed the city, carrying water from afar to public fountains, baths, and even some private homes. It was a complex network, a brilliant example of the innovative and forward-thinking mindset of its architects and builders. The city was not lacking in public bathhouses either. In Roman society, Bathing was not merely a routine but a significant cultural activity, and Pompeii was no exception. Numerous public bathhouses dotted the city, spaces for social interaction, relaxation, and of course, maintaining personal hygiene. The people of Pompeii didn't stop at cleanliness. Fitness and athletic pursuits were valued, leading to the establishment of a city gymnasium and a swimming pool. These public facilities reflected the culture of physical well-being and leisure that was cultivated in Pompeii, which was not dissimilar to the importance we place on fitness and recreational activities today. Moreover, Pompeians nurtured their spiritual side. Many homes in the city had a small shrine, known as a lararium, dedicated to the household gods. These shrines were a focal point of the home, representing the close relationship between the residents and their deities. They reveal the intimate intertwining of the spiritual and the mundane in the lives of Pompeians, a vivid demonstration of the deep-rooted importance of religion in everyday life. The citizens of Pompeii also greatly valued knowledge and learning. This commitment to intellectual pursuits was embodied in the city's two public libraries. The very existence of these libraries, filled with scrolls and tablets, underscores the high regard the ancient Romans had for education and the dissemination of knowledge. It portrays a city of erudite citizens, engrossed in matters of philosophy, politics, and art, all made accessible through these hubs of learning. In contemporary times, Pompeii continues to be a subject of active research. One exciting area of exploration involves efforts to read the petrified scrolls found in the city's libraries. Advanced techniques such as tomography imaging and artificial intelligence are being employed to decipher these fragile remnants of the past providing new insights into the rich intellectual life of ancient Pompeii. Pompeii was not just a city of stone and intellect, it was a city of color. Its buildings were vibrant canvases, their walls adorned with frescoes painted in various hues, 
including yellow, blue, and green, in addition to the traditionally recognized red. The vivid colors reflected the city's lively spirit, its joyous celebration of life and its proclivity for beauty. Beyond the vibrancy of their homes, the inhabitants of Pompeii enjoyed a high standard of living. This is evident from the many artifacts unearthed over centuries of archaeological exploration. Glassware, silverware, and other luxury items were commonplace, reflecting the prosperity and refinement that characterized Pompeian society. Whether they were used for dining, decor, or personal adornment, these artifacts speak volumes about the city's cultural and economic prosperity. While the artistry and opulence of Pompeii were manifested in many forms, one heartwarming facet was the city's love for dogs. The relationship between Pompeians and their canine companions wasn't different from our modern attachment to our furry friends. This enduring bond was reflected in the numerous dog collars found among the city's ruins, inscribed with messages that suggest these dogs were cherished as beloved pets. In a city teeming with life and luxury, the simple affection between humans and their pets remains a poignant echo of Pompeii's soul. Amid the city's busy streets and thriving economy, the vineyards held a special place. As an essential part of Pompeii's economy, they stretched across the city, suggesting wine production as a key industry. The citizens of Pompeii enjoyed the fruit of their labor in their homes and at social gatherings, and traded it for other goods, underscoring the interplay between the city's economy and its social life. One aspect of Pompeian society that often sparks intrigue was the presence of brothels, particularly the Lepaner, one of the most famous. Explicit paintings adorned its walls, serving as a unique sort of menu of services offered. This was a clear reflection of the frank and pragmatic attitude towards sex in Roman society, a topic viewed with more prudish sensibilities in other cultures and eras. Contrasting this societal openness was a more private indulgence reserved for Pompeii's wealthy citizens, indoor plumbing. Today we take this luxury for granted, but in Pompeii, having a private water system was an extravagant symbol of wealth and status, highlighting the economic disparities within the city. A fascinating insight into Pompeii's day-to-day -day life can be gleaned from the city's graffiti. These messages, scribbled on the city's walls, were snapshots of various aspects of life in Pompeii, from political campaigns to gossip about fellow citizens. They are invaluable sources of information, providing a candid view of the city's inhabitants, their concerns, opinions, and humor. Pompeii's history is punctuated not only by the catastrophic eruption of Vesuvius, but also by significant seismic events. The city experienced several earthquakes, most notably one in 62 AD which caused substantial damage. Despite these geological challenges, the city persevered, its inhabitants adapting and rebuilding. Life in Pompeii came to a grinding halt on that fateful day in 79 AD when Mount Vesuvius erupted. A typical day of hustle and bustle was suddenly overshadowed by ominous rumblings from the nearby mountain. The eruption, while cataclysmic, also encapsulated a slice of life in Pompeii at that exact moment. This is perfectly illustrated by the numerous loaves of bread found during the excavations, preserved under the volcanic ash. These partially baked loaves, forever frozen in time, are poignant reminders of the bakers who were in the middle of their daily routines when Vesuvius unleashed its fury. Contrary to common belief, not all residents of Pompeii perished during the eruption. An estimated 2,000 people died, which, while tragic, also indicates that most of the city's inhabitants likely escaped the disaster. The imagery of a city fleeing in panic, the chaos and terror of the moment, is as haunting as it is compelling. This narrative of survival amid disaster underscores the will of the human spirit to endure, even in the face of overwhelming adversity. Perhaps the most arresting reminders of the volcanic eruption are the preserved body casts found in Pompeii. These casts, however, are not actual mummies. The volcanic ash created a hard shell around the bodies, preserving the victims' final moments. Over time, the bodies decomposed, leaving a hollow space that archaeologists later filled with plaster. These casts capture the last moments of Pompeian's lives in a dramatic and deeply moving way creating a tangible connection to the past and the human cost of the disaster. It wasn't until 1748, nearly 1,700 years after Pompeii was buried by volcanic ash, 
that serious excavation efforts began. These excavations, lasting several centuries and continuing to this day, have unearthed a city frozen in time, providing an unparalleled window into ancient Roman life. Over 30,000 artifacts have been discovered, including household items, jewelry, sculptures, frescoes, and even preserved food items. Each artifact is a precious piece of the jigsaw puzzle that is Pompeii, helping us understand the city's story more deeply. Pompeii's ruins, spreading over a total area of 44 hectares, that is 110 acres, paint a vivid picture of the city's past grandeur. Yet, despite extensive archaeological work, only about two-thirds of the city has been excavated. This suggests that Pompeii still holds many secrets, waiting to be discovered and told. Looming ominously over Pompeii to this day, Mount Vesuvius remains an active volcano. It is considered one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world, not because of its volatility, but because of the large population living nearby. The shadow of Vesuvius, both literally and metaphorically, continues to hang over the region, a stark reminder of the past and a potential harbinger of the future. Even as we continue to uncover Pompeii's rich heritage, the city's everyday realities like education, marriage, and social structure remain fascinating. Children were taught basic reading, writing, and arithmetic, with wealthier families employing private tutors for advanced education. Roman marriage customs, varied based on social status, were deeply rooted in societal norms and expectations. Furthermore, the social structure was quite rigid, with a clear division between the elite and the commoners, and slaves forming a significant part of the population. Interestingly, Pompeii even had its firefighting crew, called the Vigiles. This was an organized group responsible for maintaining order and preventing fires, further evidence of the city's advanced infrastructure. As we reflect on Pompeii, we are reminded of the transient nature of civilizations, of how the grandeur of human creations, teeming with life one moment, can become silent relics the next. Yet these relics, silent as they may be, still narrate tales of a time long past, of lives lived fully despite their abrupt end, and of a society that, in many ways, wasn't much different from our own. Our journey through Pompeii's past, marred by catastrophe yet brimming with life, comes to an end here. But remember, the story of Pompeii is far from over. With two-thirds of the city unearthed and more discoveries waiting beneath the ashen veil, Pompeii will continue to captivate and educate us about the fascinating tapestry of human history.